fucking insane, man. I think you gotta be happy with like really sh- like there's no continuation in this action. No, right? Definitely not. All right, I'm starting the uh, intro. What's up, gang? Welcome back to the weekly live stream in the cryptocurrency industry that formerly featured Jubaka, who no longer comes around anymore, but that's all good. <laughs> we got we gotta take guy. him out of the intro. Yeah, exactly. Guest right star only. Um, I am your host, Satoshi, and with me is my fellow co-host Jedi from Blockmates. What's up, Jedi? Good to be here. Missed you guys said, last week. Said, and then it's the one, the only random task. Oh, that's me. There it is. There's my cue. And so our nice. special guest, Guac Intern, who is just an <laughs> avocado. What's up, dude? What's up, guys? Nice Great to be here. <laughs> so it's a tasty we're, episode today. Oh, it's so, yeah. Looks that way. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to, you know, diverge a little bit from our normal format here. We're going to uh, take some time to talk to Guac Intern. Um, about some cool things, some Solana things, and then we'll get on to our like sort of market overview slash shit talk. Um, so with that said, uh, Senor Guac, you want to give us a little brief overview of uh, what you got going on and we can sort of get into some questions. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess we'll just do a, a quick summary, start from the, yeah. the very beginning here. Yeah. Uh, so we launched uh, Guacamole as a meme coin. Um, and on several other spaces and, you know, it's documented and we explain this to the community, the best way for us to do this, um, and like kind of build what we wanted to do was start with community first and build on the back of what we refer to as cultural currency, uh, through memes, the virality, the branding, the marketing, et cetera. Uh, because without distribution in the crypto ecosystem, you can build the best products, you know, possible, but no one's going to use them and, you know, you're not going to catch on and be able to scale. Uh, so what we decided to, you know, been in the industry since 14, I've seen it all. And we decided to essentially launch Guac as a fair launch, uh, stealth launch, didn't really tell anybody about it at all. 94% of the tokens were initially deposited into a radium liquidity pool. Uh, right. And we burnt redemption against them. So you know, they'll be there forever. I think that position's worth like 200k in liquidity now locked liquidity. Um, and, you know, rode the rode the meme uh, phase for a little bit. We, you know, were very active on spaces, Twitter, you know, I was like talking on spaces with a helium voice changer to get people to like talk about us. And all of a sudden out of nowhere, we start referring to products that we're building and kind of caught everybody off surprise, like on surprise. So, uh, the guacamole ecosystem right now consists of two different parallels. So we refer to these as both the consumer app parallel and the DeFi slash Dex parallel. Uh, so, the consumer app parallel was the first uh, application that we launched and um, we referred to it as the guac shop. Uh, so what we did here is um, we essentially, you know, we want to combine uh, regular e-commerce, gaming, you know, points redemption systems, leaderboards, et cetera, with the crypto ecosystem so that we can onboard users in a familiar manner that, you know, they're, they're not accessing a website and, you know, they have no idea what's going on. So. You know, right now you can buy plenty of games. Uh, we and, and speaking of the Guac Shop, literally 15 minutes ago, we just launched the updates and revamps. Uh, so this post on Twitter about that and what this includes. Uh, but you can currently buy a bunch of games, um, you know, everything from like Skyrim all the way to um, we're adding like Cyberpunk, Starfield, you know, No Man's Sky, et cetera. The list goes on and on. There's subscriptions for Discord, Nitro, Crunchyroll, Xbox Live, et cetera. And all of these are, you know, all you got to do is connect your Phantom wallet and, and pay with USDC. There's you know, really no onboarding friction at all. Um, we also do raffles, giveaways, et cetera. And, um, you know, the avatar NFTs that we launch are, are now considered a premium model on there. So they give you some special features and we're partnering with some, you know, big entities, uh, 
if you're browsing the the Twitter thread right now, I'm sure that you'll see there's some platforms and exchange names in there that that you all know for you know integrated platforms and completing missions and tasks to earn extra points that will be redeemable uh, for you know avatar upgrades things like that. Uh, so I'm really really excited about that because it's a it's a nice way to introduce you know crypto to what we in the ecosystem our little niche bubble of, of degenerates refer to as normies right uh, mm -hmm. but then on the other I've side got of, the, i've got the website up here actually if we want to flip to the screen here there you go you just so that's so that's the that's what we're about to talk about next so that's nice. the DeFi suite so this is the dex so if you go to the main page there you'll see that um there's this is the other parallel of the ecosystem, right? So in order to uh, drive revenue to the DAO and, we'll, and like we'll get about that, we essentially launch products um, with the thesis of aggregating everything like through the composability of Solana and the way that, you know, the ecosystem is built, uh, obtaining partnerships and integrations. And that's essentially why I'm on the call with you guys right now, because, you know, we integrated um, Heroes Network and and the, the deck and I'm about to do the paramutual uh, protocols as well, trading arena. Uh, but the Guacamole DeFi suite is essentially built for... Um, to be like the front page uh, of Solana, I think is like the best way to put it. Um, I'm not trying to rip off like steps, um, you know, motto or anything, but if you want to essentially, you know, introduce somebody to the Solana ecosystem, the best way to do it is with a platform that has the simplest UX possible. Explainers mm -hmm. thing is very straightforward. Um, you know, one of the things that we talk about a lot is like, if you want to onboard somebody to like trading on Solana, you can't onboard them to a, way, a website or application that they type in the URL and it looks like they're, you know, about to try to launch a space shuttle or interacting with the NASDAQ terminal or anything like that. You can't expect people to know and be comfortable with, you know, accessing these sites and like, you know, trying to interact with these sites. So what we do is we essentially, lack of a better word, dumb everything down, right? We try to make every integration as simple as possible. We take out everything that, you know, isn't needed there and we roll with it. So in the guacamole decks, you know, um, and it's fun because we work on the ingredients of guacamole for branding. I see you clicking through the ingredients right now. Yeah, um, I'm just <laughs> slowly moving my way through. It's really and, clean, dude. I love the approach. And it's important too, yeah, you know, from a branding and marketing perspective, you have to, you know, guacamole, going back to the name, you have to, you know, launch with something that's easier to remember, something that's fun, et cetera. You have to build around that brand. That's where the ingredients come in, et cetera. But then the ingredients all represent different facets of the ecosystem that we continue to grow and scale. So like garlic is trading, uh, the tomatoes is earning on chain lemon is like playing games onion is a bunch of tools for managing our portfolio and then you know the pepper is our spicy lunch system which is something that we're working on integrating a bunch of features for other projects to be able to launch you know efficiently successfully kind of match what we did with our launch as well uh you know transparent and everything verifiable as well so and then in each system so if you go to like the trade or, or garlic or um anything like that you know mm -hmm. uh so we launch and and we like to be transparent as well with like things that we're doing. So there's a lot of things that are coming soon here as well, because we want, you know, people to interact, give feedback on these products. We want, you know, sneak peeks, et cetera, because uh, I talk to the community all the time. And, you know, we have literally like two notebooks of community feedback on like what they want to see and how they want to interact with Solana. And every single time we're developing or designing a product, we go through these notebooks, we go through this feedback and, you know, there's several iterations. So in the trade section, you know, we launched with the swap aggregator, we have bridge swaps, and then we've partnered and collaborated with Hero for the crypto features section as well. And getting down to it, you know, because that's that's why we're here. It's interesting to for us uh, with the crypto futures. One, we like working with Hero because you know we do have the shared liquidity, etc. We do have the ability to you know kind of piggyback and, and um, off of them so that you know we don't have to worry as a protocol about supply and liquidity. We can work with you guys on integrations, and it's fun for us specifically with the, the dexterity integrations because we're essentially using these in like a new way that other hero integrators haven't done before. So when we did a bunch of research, right, and you're looking at you know what futures interfaces people are interacting with, why they're interacting with it, and we ended up doing a huge case study on like Rollbit's interface and why would this was so popular. So one of the reasons it's so popular, obviously, is the leverage, right? People love yeah. being degenerate on. Um, so, but the other reason it was very popular is because it was super simple and straightforward, right? You're not trying to interact with something that looks like Bybit or OKX, you know, on a daily basis. It's literally there's a graph. You select your market. You press up, up and down, and you click. 
right? So mm -hmm. going back to the thesis of simplification specifically, and then putting this on chain, you know, there had to be some differences because it's on chain. Um, and because, you know, we are limited, but we work very closely with your own, like shout out to all the developers involved that collaborate with us on, um, a daily basis for integrating in this in, in a way that it hasn't been done before. So we were one of the first, um, integrators to launch the ZDFs. And I saw you looking at the, the, you have to connect the wallet for some of the things to work. Oh yeah, no, I have mean, <laughs> yet to connect. But, um, so like ZDF zero day features, I know that you're all familiar with them. So like we launched, uh, the, the only possible in Solana zero day features like a day after the, the token launched on chain. And we're working right now because, you know, ZDFs are expirable. They're not perpetual, like BTC F soul, uh, futures mm -hmm. on here. So we're integrating auto rotating markets mm -hmm. so that as soon as one settles, you know, out of expiry and it, and it closes it, the trade back to your account, it would automatically list the new market on the interface. Um, automation is great for you know being able to scale this product so our devs aren't you know manly pushing new market ids etc uh, all day and um it's interesting because you know we've had a lot of feedback and support on being able to do this um and we're excited to be able to do this with hero because you know we can kind of collaborate on what tokens are going to be launching how you interact with them and being able to offer you know that that speculative margin slash leverage on these markets uh as well any questions so far <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, flying through. I mean, nothing for me other than that I love about uh, there's no buy and sell tax on some of these meme coins if you trade it through the ZDF, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it's tight. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems like there, there is like there's an ambitious shell here that you're filling up. Um, there's like so, so much to do. I really thought it was cool. Your tools tab. Um you know, kind of what, what's the thinking behind this? Like, is this like to make sort of like a no code solution for, for people who want to interact at like the creation level? Yeah. So I've been, uh, like I said, I've been in, in this industry since 14, but I also do a lot of like supplementary work in other industries. And I'm a huge proponent of no code interfaces and the growth that they can achieve and yeah. how, you know, users can interact with them and, and help scale, not just like our platform, but the ecosystem as a whole. Right. So like, you'll be able to do all of these things, you know, you can do all the things that you're looking at now, but we also have like triple the amount of tools about to launch. I don't know if you guys are familiar with like compressed NFTs at all, uh, but we're launching a full compressed NFT tool suite probably next week as well. And what this allows you to do is like anything that, that you need to do on chain to like manage your portfolio, you'll be able to do. So like in the trade section, we're about to launch liquidity pools, for, but not just our own. You'll be able to interact with Radium, Orca, Meteora, every other, you know, platform right on our interface. We, Our goal is not to, you know, just like segregate ourselves off and like capture all the revenue for ourselves. Our goal is to like make sure that like your experience on chain is as beneficial and simple as possible. So when you go back to the tool section, and you're looking at this and it's like, you know, you have a bunch of these new projects popping out specifically with like what spicy launch in its entirety will do. Uh, so there's a huge overlap with the tool section, you know, the airdrops. Uh, one of the, the popular <laughs> things right now is emergency send with like wallet drainers and stuff. And we'll get into the defenders integration in a second that we're working on. But, you know, if one of your wallets is compromised and you, or you suspect there's been like a security risk, you just type in a new wallet address, press the button and it sends everything over to a new wallet. So like it's an easy way for you to like get out of a sticky situation, you know, burn tokens, burn NFTs, close accounts. You know, we all know how, you know, Solana programs work with rent, et cetera. So, you know, you can claim soul back. <laughs> For some of those, you know, random NFTs, you know, the five hundred thousand dollar Radium Prize NFTs, or like the the Bonk two point NFTs, you can claim them and, and get them out of your wallet, etc. You can close token accounts if you're no longer trading that as well. Um, so there's a bunch of different things that we're like working on in this section, and there is a huge overlap with if you, if you click on Spicy Launch with that as well. So this is essentially a tool suite, but this is a tool suite for project management and project creation. And we're slowly listing, you know, and rolling things out here. And this is, you know, talking about the CNFTs, the whole CNFT portal will be here, but you'll be able to burn CF CNFTs in the, in the tool section. Uh, you'll also be able to lock liquidity uh, as well, launch your own liquidity pools on any of the supported DEXs. Um, at NFT farms, which is a novel concept that, that we've created where in the NFT space, you know, everybody's familiar with being able to stake NFTs for tokens, but whatever you could stake 
you know, tokens for randomly redeemable NFTs. It helps to bootstrap liquidity in a different way. You know, you could be, you could choose like not just guac, but like we could choose guac's, you know, sole radium LP to obtain NFTs. So it's a good way to, you know, distribute NFTs, represent your community and, and bootstrap liquidity without having, you know, dilutionary or inflationary tokenomics attached to it. Uh, but everything here, you know, we, we essentially wanted to create the most one transparent system for projects to launch where we can capture all verifiable things. So like if they lack liquidity in our liquidity lockers, when they launch, you know, they don't have to post a soul scan transaction to prove that they burn liquidity anymore because your average user is going to look at that, you know, if, if they've just been onboarded and be like, I don't know what the hell this means. Right. But mm -hmm. if they go on guacamole and there's a huge lock button there and it explains exactly how long liquidity is locked for, what this means, et cetera, you know, that's like beneficial to the whole ecosystem, specifically more meme coins or community oriented coins and the ability to like launch your pools, launch your farms, you know, create your token and an, even create your token right and a no code interface is like super important for the growth of solana because if you want things to to grow you can't rely on like just command line interfaces and, and programmatic you know responses to things you have to be able to like give this to everybody yeah it seems like um you know the typical project life cycle is like you know cr create a novel or even a very not novel idea and then like get it to a beta and like start, you know, getting it working and then eventually release a token and then eventually hope to gather memes and community around that token and the protocol. And it seems like you guys have like flipped that on its head. Um, you know, you started with memes and a token and then built out the infra. Was that strategic? Is that something you notice as like a, an opportunity in the space? Yeah, it was very strategic going back to like my introduction on things uh, around community building uh, and, and, you know, scalability and distribution as well. Um, so the ability to launch is like a meme coin for us. And, and I'm not saying it's like easily replicatable, right? I think we launched at the exact right time for it with like Pepe Mania and people looking for things on chain. We had the perfect branding around everything, you know, very easy to meme as well. Very easy to spread, very easy to go viral. Um, and having this underlying, you know, thesis of there will be products like the products were already planned at right. launch we just didn't make it known to the community as well but what we first did was you know it, going back to it like after the launch sequence we started um the dow organization so one thing to us is very that was very important is essentially the community as well so like everything you see everything that you interact with supports the dow so there's like no private allocations there's no team allocations in tokenomics all revenue from all you know, every interface, every product that you interact with within the ecosystem goes to the DAO that then, you know, what we refer to as scoops of dicks. So dip. So like it will essentially acquire guacamole off markets. And the DAO currently holds like almost 7% of all guac and started with almost nothing. Uh, and what we can do here is that, you know, com through community proposals, you know, actual governance where it's not a DAO where like the foundation holds 75% of tokens and just passes the proposals that they want because of our distribution, we can, you know, incentivize when we launch DeFi, you know, when we launch our LP pools, we can incentivize liquidity there. If there's a huge social, you know, interactions or, or growth phase that we want to do, we can, you know, vote to propose things there. Uh, for governance staking as well, we can subsidize that like through revenue, etc. So there's a bunch of things that we can do that are a lot more fair and, you know, interactable um, than your traditional DAO. And, and one of the things I'm excited about, you know, looking back about how the DAO formation was, is like most, of, most DAOs that you interact with, it's like a centralized entity essentially like sets up how the DAO is going to work. And you can like, you know, obtain that token to participate in what they said is how their governance will work. With our DAO, from step one, it was like literally like, what are the parameters going to be voted on democratically? What are the what's the quorum going to be voted on democratically? Like, what are we using for governance voted on democratically? We even like select we had a full election process for like a council over the course of a month as well. where like we elected council members from like, you know, popular NFT projects, pop popular token projects, people with good backgrounds that the community felt could like help you know, push guacamole forward alongside the intern as well. So it's like not just me anymore, right? So like I lead the contributor team and you could say like I'm the founder, but like guacamole is extended beyond myself. We had third party integrations integrating guac as well. So like Solarplex, it's like a Twitter clone on, on Solana. You know, they just what we sponsored, like we went from being a meme coin to sponsoring hackathon tracks as well. And like they won our hackathon track for the introduction of guacamole tipping and like guacamole interactions within their, their platform as well. So, 
we're really, really excited looking back on like everything we've accomplished so far. And, you know, knowing like what's co what's coming next is like one of the main contributors and like project lead behind the scenes. Um, I'm super excited for like what we're what we're approaching as an ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. the tool set here is pretty incredible. Uh, yeah, it's just pretty looking wild. through it as you're talking. Yeah, I like the the DCA feature, uh, you know, baked in dollar cost averaging. That's not something I've seen on chain before. It's pretty dope. Yeah, so uh, place the limit limit orders on yeah. dollar cost averaging. So like um, going back, like Bird Eye just released that, like you can see order books through like Jupe and on chain as well from like multiple markets. So we'll also have that in our place limit orders as well. I see able to view like action on chain as you place limit orders and then dollar cost averaging. Yeah, we're using a, you know, a central TWAM program so that you can put in like what token you want to buy with what token and time increments as well. And then, you know, we'll crank those out for you. Um, but, you know, on the training page as well, you'll see the trading arena and going back to hero we're you know we already have uh the dexterity protocol introduced in our crypto futures but we're building the trading arena on top of the paramutuals and you know you have a lot of other product products and, and um you know companies that have built on top of the paramutuals with like you know bonker bust or you know i, I think it's called iconic with like mm -hmm. moonshot moon or moon wrecked um but we're adding like a secondary layer on top of this where you're not only competing against the market you're competing against other players at the same time and you'll be able to like learn earn special prizes you know i don't know how familiar we are with like the esports and gaming scene but you'll be able to like acquire elo ratings as well for your performance against the market and other players as well and move up the ranks and like you know gain new opportunities new benefits new capabilities as well so that's something that we're working on behind the scenes too sick yeah love it so so we have a situation here where you guys are essentially doing everything. I mean, it doesn't really seem yeah. like anything here that you guys aren't covering. What are the kind of like implications of that? Is this a case of, you know, kind of like a jack of all trades and master of none? Are you comfortable with that? I mean, what's kind of like the thinking, you know, between you and the team around almost like spreading yourselves too thin? Or is that just not really something that's that's come to the fore yet? So there's two theories here. Um, one theory is that um, looking at where the industry's heading, right? Front end, front ends, right? If you really want to onboard uh, and and expand the like everything within you know blockchain, crypto, et cetera, Solana specifically, front ends will control the future because front ends are what users interact with, right? So designing the most you know integrated and, and simplified front end to be able to do this is super important, and only you know supplying one or two tools when Solana specifically and you know other blockchains are so composable, et cetera. You know if all these protocols are open sourcing their code SDKs, et cetera. Why not integrate them so that everybody can do things in one place? So that's a thesis that we have as well um, that will support growth. And you know everything that's integrated does support DAO revenue. It's you know it's integrated for like three different reasons: either DAO revenue, um, visibility, or marketing purposes. Right. So like it's either it's responsible for scaling in three different vectors. Um, but then the other one here that you can look at, going back to the jack of all trades comment, is our you know, an Amazon case study. So like you could essentially refer to like Amazon as being a, a jack of all trades because they have, you know, the e-commerce so solutions, they have their cloud solutions, they have their tech solutions, they have streaming, et cetera. And each one of them is successful in its own right. So, but when you compare like Amazon to like Target or, or Walmart, mm -hmm. et cetera, you have to look at how they're pitching themselves. You know, Walmart pitches as themselves as like the cheapest place to get things. Target pitches themselves as like, you know, Target, where essentially it's almost <laughs> the nicer like, stuff. Yeah. Well, it's almost essentially the same quality, right? Yeah. When you're looking at it, but it's because yeah. of their marketing and the way that they're doing things that they're able to, you know, charge the prices that they do, that they're able to do the things they do. When you look at Amazon, then they don't refer to quality at all. They refer to like everything that you can do in the platform, right? It is like, like a one-stop shop for everybody. You just need to essentially know where to look. So like, what if you took the Amazon thesis and applied it to, you know, a, a front end for crypto and, and integrated everything into one spot? Everybody's familiar with how to use Amazon, right? Everybody's, you know, um, comfortable with it. it. It's gained, you know, huge social proof, social rapport, et cetera, has grown to like, you know, billions of dollars in market cap and, you know, billions of dollars in revenue through several different products. Uh, but the ability to do this within the crypto ecosystem, you know, I don't think it's been attempted yet uh, successfully uh, most of the time because you have, and, and this goes back to other things that we've observed. It's like most of the time you have these teams that'll launch, you know, a simple, you know, product, right? But it, it overall isn't necessarily a product. You have to understand the difference between a product and a feature. So like when should something just be a feature 
of a complete application or a complete ecosystem and wants something to be a product on its own. So like LP pools can be a product on their own, but like, you know, anything built on top of that, et cetera, or like, you know, something that would interact with another, another protocol, that's not necessarily a product, that's just a feature. So being able to like lump them in together into the same interface and supply this, you know, in the, in the most simple manner uh, for people, I think is, you know, one of our strengths at Guacamole. And we move fast, you know, we have this joke that, you know, avocados don't sleep. We're always pushing out new updates daily on, on both sides of the application. Application. And this, you know, you were, we're talking mainly about DeFi here as well, but then you go back to, you know, our consumer application, which is responsible for, you know, onboarding people and is, is highly marketable, it's advertisable, etc. We're very familiar with like the e-commerce industry as well, um, you know, from the contributor team. So being able to take that knowledge over to like that part of the ecosystem and then combine both of them as well is super, you know, I think also beneficial for us as a community. Well, I will say that the, the layout is very refreshing. And yeah. personally, I find myself um, getting like, you, you end up with like five different websites when you just want to do one thing. You're like, oh, I'm going to stake this. I got to sign into that. I got to move it over here. I got to bridge over here on synapse. And then I got to go over here to do that. Um, I love the idea of having like an all in one spot for in this case working through anything solana so that's yeah dope. chrome tabs eat up eat up like enough of your memory right so mm -hmm. like instead of having 10 tabs open interact <laughs> 50 open wanted, right yeah now. exactly yeah, so yeah. like having one tab open that you can interact with and just like switch mm -hmm. through things and get lost in things that we're doing mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. you know that's very important for onboarding as well because you can't expect somebody to like go to one app if you're telling your like friend right who's like yo i want to like you know get into this and you're like okay go to this website and then go to this app and then like log in here with your wallet and do this it's like they get lost at step one right so it's literally that trying to explain to my buddy the other day to buy hero he's like i want to buy some of that hero coin i was like okay cool so you got to go here you got to make this wallet make sure you seed it don't write it down put it over here then you got to get some solana seed your wallet with that but you're going to need an exchange account to buy your first solana so you have to sign up over here and like and by the end of that conversation, just too like, late idiot <laughs> yeah by the end of that conversation he's like fuck off i hate crypto i'm never coming over there. So if somebody um, can but, show up to this site and, you know, even something as simple as like preceding a wallet with 0 0.01 Solana, like that yeah. just reduces so much friction for somebody who's coming in completely fresh, trying to play on chain and doesn't have a centralized exchange account to get that initial gas money. Like, yeah. so that'd be my... I My reco is make the answer to that question very straightforward and one website away. Like that's Yeah, we're also working on several oh. ways to onboard integrate it into both, you know, facets of of the ecosystem, both parallel. So like on the guac, you know, dot gg, the, the guac shop, the consumer app, we're working with a few centralized exchanges on on direct integrations as well. And then on the DeFi side, we're working on, you know, just a, a quick onboarding method where if you want to, if you have a wallet sign up, it's like, you know, are you new to Solana? If, if no wallets, you know, installed as you open the website a tutorial will pop up and guide you through everything and every step that you need to know mm -hmm. account yeah. abstraction is probably the single biggest i think on a zero to one aspect that DeFi will see i think going into the next cycle and i really love the fact that you guys have done this all in one thing and and, and the great answer by the way in terms of the jack of all trades and i completely agree with your rationale i think it is the way to go um, and to kind of have that perspective, it's not about being good at one thing. It's like, how do we bring it all together? And I think that's going to change. I think you guys are obviously seeing, you know, the, the, the correct landscape, but I just wanted to ask you, so the protocol was launched, uh, beginning of May, 2023. Um, and you've managed to obviously get a serious amount built in that time. And more importantly, perspective around what you've built is it's extensive are you guys kind of like profitable at the moment um or is that still to happen and yeah so the, so the dow uh frequently almost daily does you know take the revenue that we acquire and and acquire guac with that back for the dow like i said the dow started with almost nothing we're almost up to 70 okay. percent now and uh, we actually everything that the dow does is also transparent so every time the dow moves money every time the dow acquires guac every time the dow you know deposits guac into the treasury there's transparency reports that are released you know on x and in, in discord etc on telegram saying this amount of guac was moved so like you know on the third of you know just this week you know we moved 206 billion guac to the avocado as well and i think 
market holds, you know, not looking at it last time we checked, it was like at current market prices, it was like 160 to $170,000 worth of guac. So from a strategic point, when you guys launched the meme coin, was was that the intention around raising the funds and then using those funds to kind of take the meme and turn it into something that is the serious business at the moment? Or did it just happen, happen by accident? I mean, what's the honest answer here? So when you're looking at raising funds, essentially, there were no funds raised from the yeah. launch at all right so because the way that we yeah. you know dropped the tokenomics like i said 94 percent of the tokens to the liquidity pool right away the other six percent were actually set aside for bridges uh exchange listings market making etc so like that wasn't accessible by our team either there's transparency reports on all of those movements so like you know a month in we got a bit more listing because the the community wanted a, an exchange listing and sometimes you do follow through with you know what the community wants and needs etc even if you don't agree that it's you know the most beneficial thing for for moving forward ultimately you know now i think the community agrees with you know our vision of being able to incentivize things through dow revenue a little bit you know greater uh but a lot of the so like i said i've been around uh, a while this isn't you know my main thing i do i do work a job as well and you know one thing that I'm really good at is time management. <laughs> if you're looking at like what I do uh, for other crypto companies, you know, from product management, you know, consulting, et cetera. I work with wallets, exchanges, onboarding ramps, uh, layer one protocols, everything I've contributed to it over the past decade. Um, but taking that knowledge and be able to also bootstrap a lot of the development myself, uh, because essentially like we do believe in, in the concept of guacamole, right? Like we do believe in the, in the thesis that we've laid out with, you know, everything, essentially tackling everything backwards, right? When you, when you start a, a project and you save a bunch of tokens to the side and you raise a bunch of funds through VC, there's less accountability on that team to deliver, right? They've already obtained their money right? They already have all the tokens. They can pass any proposal that they want. There's several cases where, you know, this has been like transparently logged for people and I won't call anybody out, but it's like apparent, you know, with, and it's uh, detrimental to the industry. So by doing everything backwards and starting the DAO with almost zero and then having to build products, you know, to, to obtain the accountability, to obtain that revenue for the DAO, you know, I think it pushes us a lot faster. Uh, and the internal contributors, the community, the ecosystem is a lot more driven because when you're looking at things like, you know, you have to be responsible and you can't waste a bunch of time. So I think that's another facet on like why we move so fast with integrations as well. You know, why we, you know, tackle marketing the way that we do, you know, I, and it's nice right now. Cause we're like with our marketing, it's like 50% memes and then like 50% serious. So like when we launch a product, it'll be like, you know, this huge video with like memes included and, you know, but we'll have a lot of information about the product as well. Um, you know, when we're, when we're posting on socials and we're interacting with the community, like, you know, we'll, will roast people, but at the same time, we'll like guide them to, you know, one of our products as well and be able to like keep latching onto that, that virality, the, the cultural currency of being able to be that idea that's like easily spread through our niche, not only our niche, but like the internet as a whole, and then attach revenue driving products for the community on top of that. And then use that, you know, revenue to incentivize further growth of the community is super important. So when AI... <laughs> uh, so, so like one of so like part of my team is um uh, machine learning and ai specialists for some other things that we do um, we've kind of explored it a little bit but like right now it's not necessarily you know the main focus uh we're very Bullish. transparent with the things that we do and the things that we're integrating so like if you ever go to our docs we refer to our roadmap as the spread and you can see everything that we plan on doing and you know we'll mark it off as it's done there's some things that aren't documented there just because like you know for some of our like super novel ideas we essentially like want to be first to market um but other than that like you know we we essentially lay it out so that people um within our ecosystem people outside of you know the guacamole guacamole community can like look at what we're, what we're doing and like know what to expect next so we've like even broken things down into phases and it's like we get asked a lot. It's like, why didn't you launch the liquidity pools yet? Why didn't you launch the AMM yet? And it's like, well, being able to to create further revenue driving products, right, and like scaling growth before we launch those allows us to incentivize more liquidity into the liquidity into the AMM and liquidity pools, so that you know we have the liquidity there for popular, you know, arbitrage and like bots are super popular in Solana. So like, you supply the liquidity, then the AMM makes its fees, then we, you know, it's it's a whole stepped process right so like you can turn the guac that we incentivize the liquidity with into into more revenue for for the dow as well but in order to do that we need you know looking at economics we need a certain amount of guac in order to 
correctly incentivize these things and make sure that it's not just like mercenary incentives either, where it's like, you know, the liquidity leaves as soon as the, the Glock runs out. Right. Uh, so being able to like essentially like recycle these as well, because we don't have, you know, burn mechanisms like a lot of other meme coins. It's like the tokens that exist, exist. And when the DAO acquires them, they just get directed through proposals to places or new products or features that we feel could scale our ecosystem the best at that time to either new users or new revenue sources. Tight. Mm -hmm. Um, well, you guys bring new meaning to the phrase guac is extra. <laughs> yeah, a little bit extra, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. uh, quite the ambitious project. Super cool to see all this stuff aggregated in, in one portal. Um, and mm -hmm. it's exciting. Uh, I, you know, if you, if you even get half of the sort of advertised features here launched before, you know, I also know that you're like sharing your screen right now. So if you go to, I know you're on guacamole.gg, the DEX interface, but if you go to just guac.gg, that's the other part of the the ecosystem that we talked about, like the shop and the consumer application as well. That's where I can buy Skyrim. That's where, yeah, you can buy a bunch of things and you know, oh, we'll, sure. we'll be upgrading yeah. this as Quick well. Quick shop, RT. I used to love Skyrim. Well, welcome back, friend. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we just launched a bunch of updates for this product as well today. And you know, um, we'll be listing over 500 new items in here as well for all kinds of different platforms, Steam, Origin, GOG, gift card subscriptions, the popular, you know, things that you're uh, familiar with as well. Um, the premium membership model dependent on your Glock holdings or your NFT holdings gives you discounts, you can earn extra rewards as well. We're already working with several integration partners, um, you know, so that you can link your accounts up from other platforms or exchanges and go on missions or complete tasks within those platforms to earn points that you can either redeem for game subscriptions or upgrades to your you know nfts as well if you want a little bit more social representation like if i wanted to add a you know a specific or unique hat to my avatar i could do so through completing these missions or i could just redeem those points for you know uh going back to skyrim a copy of skyrim as well tight ladies and gentlemen this is how you get mass adoption <laughs> yeah, I've, I've never heard of buying direct through your pen and wallet. This is new. For me. <coughs> this is dope. This is yeah. very impressive, sir. Um, mm -hmm. I cover protocols for a living. I talk about them. I interview people, and this is exactly what we need. We need more of this. Please continue doing what it is that you're doing. You motherfuckers mm -hmm. are super organized, man. Really, yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah we're no, we no. have we're driven. We you know have our internal map, and you know we uh, we even just introduced like transparent change logs within the documentation, so you can follow our progress and what we push on a daily basis as well. Um, new upgrades, new bug fixes, new, you know, features are live almost daily at this point uh, as well. Uh, so, you know, even going back to Hero, we're about to push the the auto rotating ZDF markets, the ability to close accounts for rent back and even individual position PL tracking uh, so that you can, you know, get a screenshot of your position and share it with your ref link to the guacamole decks and, you know, show off your fat stack while earning rewards for drawing other users to, to the ecosystem. But, um, Dude, every is there any part of this flywheel that you guys haven't bloody well thought about? And obviously, um, <laughs> there's also the there's also the the hero flywheel as well. I mean, you guys yeah. have obviously integrated into the network. How are you guys maximizing benefit off the hero flywheel and the network that they obviously and the incentives that they've got in place at the moment? Yeah. So if you're looking at like bet, so like the the two questions that you asked, one. Going back to, you know, experiencing the industry and being project management project lead for a lot of these things, you learn and you observe, you know, you said that you interview protocols for a living. Over the past few years, I'm sure that like you've observed things that work and things that don't work, things that are wasted time and things that are worth your time, right? So like being able to take all of our experience, you know, working together because the, the contributors that work under me, it's not just like random people, right? It's like people that I've worked with for almost a decade now. So it's like, if I'm about to do one thing, they know what to do next, which allows us to deploy things super fast. And and, you know, they're familiar with different ecosystems. They work on different, different you know, smart contract uh, protocols as well. So it's like easy for us to take the composability and just like lump it all in and just like release product after product after product and like show people how it needs to be done if you want growth. Um, but also understanding like the 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 roadblocks, the, the forks in the road that lead to dead ends and like why you won't pursue a certain thing or like, you know, if somebody suggests something, being able to, you know, come back with them and not be snappy, but take the critique and say, well, this is how like why we haven't done it so far as well. But going back to the hero thing, you know, and being, you know, the, the marketability of, of Guacamole helps with the hero, you know, 
uh, dexterity interface greatly because you have you know hero supplies the base for you for us and the protocol level liquidity you know shared among the markets etc but to be able to take you know our community and apply it to this as well um so it, it benefits both of us you know because we've shared you know I'm, I'm sure in telegram and you know the chats that we've had we've shared tons of feedback on like what you know needs to to happen for you know just there in the paramutuals to gain more mass adoption the integrations that need to be there not just for us but for them to you know add natively for anybody else trying to build on hero as well right because like we're not selfish at guac it's like you know if this is going to make your protocol better we'll share the feedback we're not just going to integrate it ourselves uh but the ability to you know easily integrate hero because of its composability work with the dev team on things that we need a, a dev team that you know specifically within the hero network that is like super responsive super capable as well to work alongside of us and kind of like it, it's been a fantastic experience because it you know with with most you know if you're introducing like you know some of the amms or lps or or other features that we're working on that aren't native to guac and we're just applying an interface for it's like communication can be you know intermittent you know so like you'll get a message every day or two it's but we communicate with hero on a ba daily basis for hours right for the for the next updates that are coming out to make this better and you know shout out to the community for for supplying the feedback shout out to you know hero for being so responsive and the specific devs that we work with there uh and being able to you know one make the interface and like the interaction the user experience what it needs to be for something like this on chain is super important because like you have competitors that are off chain right with like rollbit and soul casino is about to launch something and there's a bunch of other just like gamified perpetuals and futures interfaces as well but they're all you know within centralized ecosystems the database that attaches to oracles and like you know this is what the price is going to be etc so like having this on chain in a permissionless manner is, is super important to us because you know one it makes us one of the only ones to do so and when you attach you know the the community that actually interacts with the product and doesn't just like speculate on token price um it's super important as well because that drives revenue to the dow it drives the product to be better and it helps you know overall growth of what we're doing oh, i yeah. find it really interesting i find it really interesting that you guys like essentially use the meme coin kind of like angle as a means to obviously raise the funds but you're almost like like flipping it now and you're saying like let's actually build a profitable business that will take care of us and obviously the DAO and and everybody that's involved and let's not actually look at oh the irony the price of the token which is quite a rare thing um and i think that maybe it might be an example of of moving away from the value of a token and looking at market fit before the token becomes an issue or a factor. Um, I mean, is that something that you think the space will move in the direction or do you think we're just going to land up being with a majority speculative market from here until eternity? So looking at, so <laughs> going back, I have like a, a formal education in communication design, but also psychology as well. And when you attach um, any monetary value, to something no matter how hard you try there will always yeah. be speculative markets on this so the fact that mm -hmm. like you know anything in the crypto ecosystem has a monetary value for it to trade from one person to another or trade through a protocol will always you know introduce that concept like you will never mm -hmm. ever no matter how hard you try get away from that because ultimately as humans we're greedy right so like people you know they're in this to make money you know you can like us you know you can say you're you're in it for the tech you can build a bunch of tech and, and everything but ultimately your community like you know they will be there when money is to be made like that is you know you have to understand that underlying human psychology you know if they want to invest their time in this you know there has to be something in return right not me dude <laughs> I, I can I can sit here and argue about you know you know being in the industry for so long and how you know you come to a certain point in realization where like you know some of the things that you develop are essentially needed for the progression of the human race but we won't get into like that huge theory uh, but looking at you know and finishing the the question here essentially it's like we and I made made this joke because um, you know I don't like to refer to charts for for the token a lot. I don't even like to you know acknowledge the price of the token because like that is out of our control as well. But there was this like large val valley after our initial launch where it's like everybody you know was you know kind of writing guacamole off etc. Um, but I, you know in Discord daily and like providing updates daily and it was just like I don't care if I'm the last person here and everybody leaves this 
because it's like what we're doing isn't just for like you guys in the community. It's like I'm building protocols and products that like I want to use, that I want to interact with, right? Through through my experiences and like through what's available to do. So eventually, you know, you get that and like it's like, okay, time for the updates to roll out and everybody, you know, the, the virality starts to spread again, the memes start and, and you go through these processes um, with like any coin. Uh, but I think with Guacamole, it was specifically special because nobody expected what was next right so like you have this valley where it's like yeah they say they're gonna do these and like you you have that external speculation start to kick in but then when you actually like deliver the products and then deliver daily updates deliver new features you know follow like what you say you're going to do as well to provide that you know that interactive value to the community and it's like um you know our, our main focus isn't necessarily you know with a lot of uh, other you know memes is like the price is everything right like that is that is it um but we also have this internal joke it's like where you know ultimately the dow wants to acquire all of all of your guac right like the dow wants all of your guac so like the dow will continue to buy all of the guac from secondary markets the village treasury no matter what as long as we keep revenue up and you know revenue you know there's i think like 10 plus to 15 different revenue sources already in like the first like month of both of these products being live to be able to support this and we're already seeing you know sustained scalability as well um but being able to do that and and you know in perpetuity i think is important to us uh and be, also if you look at like where total you know i know that you guys talk about trades i know you know you're, you were chatting about the markets before uh the the stream started as well it's like you look at like where we launched guac right and like one of the worst crypto sentiments like ever after everything that's happened yeah. being able to like gain the traction gain the visibility you know gain the network the community etc it's like what is possible when we build all of this for onboarding purposes and for simplicity purposes for new users and it's the place that they go when market sentiment kicks up again right so like you have to look at like we're not building for for tomorrow like we're building for next year we're building for the year after that but being able to like deploy all of these things in a daily basis helps day by day yeah yeah it awesome. seems seems uh like you've got a pretty robust feature set <laughs> that uh if if even half of this is is available but you know by this time next year um i think it should do quite well uh what if you were to summarize the pumpamentals of guac besides the dow accumulating <laughs> what's 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 there like what what can i do with guac why do i want it so from a con main contributor and, and project leader standpoint, I'm not going to acknowledge the term pumpamentals at all, right? Whoa, dude, <laughs> that is, you're out on a ledge right now. <laughs> and that's uh, somebody that understands the legal requirements of <laughs> yeah. a main contributor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but lo looking at Guac on its own, um, and you can actually, you know, go to our, our docs and things, and we, we've shared a, uh, a screenshot, so let me like just pull this up really quick and you know there's a whole list so like if you're looking at everything that that the guacamole you know tokenized ecosystem includes at, at finality right there's it's a list of 16 to 20 different integrations for guacamole that doesn't include any third-party integrations like on any other platforms that we're working as with as well because we're not responsible for them but when you build a composable protocol you know and you have the liquidity that we do you know other projects can integrate so we're about to change to what we refer to as ex guac governance so you'll be able to stake guac to you know earn what we call retainer uh to participate in the dow and other facets so you don't just like earn guac because right so like you stake your guac and then you get special features you get special capabilities within all the products and you earn retainer you know fees for participating in governance so it drives participation in governance as well um and it's not you know just a a standard you know staking scheme where they have a bunch of tokens that they saved off market to supply a staking apy that are dilutionary inflationary uh, because we don't have that at guac um the referral program so you know you can hold more of the the x guac to increase your referral program incentives which then you know front funnel uh revenue or, or referral revenue to yourself uh the dow treasury like you said you know or the main mission there is to bolster the guac treasury and redistribute as needed uh there's also trading fee rebates both on hero integrations and our normal uh integrations and in the trading arena as well so like guac is not only for fee rebates uh referrals but also specific capabilities and you know like i said going back to the trading arena integrations you know specific benefits or or, or features to give you a little bit of one up on the competition uh there's also so if you go to the earn section or like the trading section, there's liquidity incentives, um, there's liquidity farming and NFT farms uh, to set up 
external. So if you're an external project, you know, if you go to Radium and you try to set up a farm, it costs Radium to set up the farm, right? So like it'll require Guac to set up a farm. It'll require Guac to, you know, initiate a tokenized NFT pool that's going back to that concept for you. Uh, we're also introducing Guac in the play section as well. So you'll be able to not only like play with Soul, but you'll be able to play with Guac. Uh, raffles and giveaways going to the Guac shop. So like if you want to enter any of the raffles, you have, you know, all tickets are only purchasable in Guac. Um, if you wanted to enter a giveaway, you either have to hold Guac or hold an avatar NFT, depending on your member level to enter specific giveaways. Shop integrations, you'll be able to shortly, right now we just have USDC activated because the, the updates just went live today and we're very, you know, we're proponents of being able to monitor things before we like start, you know, you you do updates, you monitor them, you fix bugs and then you go to the next thing. So shop integrations, you'll be able to, you know, purchase all of the items in the shop with Guac as well. Uh, I know that you are very, you know, big fans of the tooling suite as well. Uh, there's some advanced tooling that we're launching that will require, you know, holding governance guac in order to to access the in the spicy launch itself, the project management portal. You can use guac to get the most out of, you know, the integrated project management portal. Liquidity lockers uh, as well will require guac to set up and will funnel revenue to to the DAO and guac ecosystem as well. We also have riper rotten going back to the transparency that's included in the, in spicy launch as well. So you know. Um, it will require Guac to enter that, you know, because that that requires infrastructure and resources for us to do. So essentially, if you want, you know, your riper rotten score as well, there's different things that include Guac uh, for you to do there as well. And there's there's a lot more that we have planned as well. Like I said, there's some novel things that we haven't introduced yet as well because we don't, you know, we we can develop so fast. But if you know a team of, of five to ten people takes one of our ideas and launches it first after we've announced that we're going to do it i don't think that's beneficial to us as well and while we do plan to open source everything that we're doing we still want to be first to market with some of the, these things because when you you know for your your project so heavily dependent on like you know uh marketing and and scalability of you know the ecosystem and the ideas going back to that like meme basis as well you want to attach that to like novel protocol ideas and be able to capture that for for the dow it's tight um hell yeah well um i've completely taken aback by the fact i didn't know about any of this until just now because it's quite extensive um i'd like to remind you about hold on a second i want to just remind you of a conversation no. that we had. yes <laughs> several weeks ago we are told you that this is the kind of shit that was going on yeah, behind yeah. the scenes and under under the <laughs> under the, the the veil of DeFi, and here we have him he has arrived and he has yeah. just blown our minds and and i'm just an avocado dude, he's, <laughs> dude this is this is what it's all about i mean i thoroughly approve this is exactly what we need um please carry on it's great to hear yeah thanks i think that you know participation in, in the ecosystem for a while has kind of like guided our general ideas and our you know the what we want for guacamole like around a lot of detrimental decisions that other projects or, or protocols make um you know we could have taken everything that we're doing and you know launched in a different manner and raised vc funds and like gone that route and diluted the tokenomics but like one of the things that makes you know our ecosystem so prominent and important is the fact that like everything's fair if you want to participate you have the same chance to participate as anybody else um and that you know everything that we build is isn't necessarily going back to like a private company it just gets deposited in the into the treasury wallet for growth of the ecosystem um and you know seeing a lot of this uh and you know the the high fully diluted market caps of some of these projects that only have like two percent of their tokens tokens available on market, but yet claim to have like a $500 million market cap is disgusting to me. Uh, and we wanted to do it a different way where it's like all value is easily, you know, identifiable and, and uh, transparent on chain. Hell yeah. I'm not um, sure whether you I'm not sure whether you guys actually saw a question that was posed to Kobe. I think it was shortly after the whole Pepe kind of debacle with um, the kind of like the the founders splintering and the rest of it and someone asked kobe so how would you go about setting up any kind of coin but primarily a a meme coin and his response is basically 50 percent supply distributed by a three-month ico auction mechanism 50 percent supply locked forever in lp bonded with the funds raised via the ico auction and the coin creator gets zero coins and zero funds raised and the whole supply is either sold for lp or lp itself and in many ways essentially what you guys have done there seem to be quite a lot of parallels here so i'm just curious whether you read that comment 
<laughs> yeah, I'm familiar with a lot of things that go on, like with discussions between different parties as well. And you yeah. know, a lot of a lot of more prominent discussions we did take into consideration for things. And there were different, you know, uh, there were different ways that we could have launched, right? Um, but I think the way that we launched was perfect for what we wanted to do. Um, you know, if you're looking at LP bonding, et cetera, yeah, it would have helped a little bit with like capturing a little bit more TVL. Uh, but we didn't want there to be any expectation like on launch. Right. And it was like super important. We didn't want there to be an ICO that we didn't want like there to be sales. There was no private sales, pre-sales, like nobody knew except for, you know, us launching the token that like all of this was about to be released and all of this was about to be scheduled and everything that we're building was about to follow as well. And I think that's like super important because if you look at it and like, some of the most popular prod products are like networks, et cetera. And like going back to, you know, the, 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 even the Bitcoin thesis, right. It's like, you know, what made, what made this so popular? It was the fact that like, there was nothing held back. There was no intermediaries that could, you know, control the tokenomics at all. And it, and it did become fully decentralized, you know? So it's like, if you look at, you know, the, the guacanomics, we call it, et cetera. Um, and, and you look at like the holder accounts, et cetera, right now, um, you know, it, we're standing at, I think, like 5,700 holders, almost 5,700 holders. Uh, but the top 10 holder allocations, it's if you compare us to like other popular tokens, even like within the specific network, our top 10 holders only account for under 30%, 37% of holdings. And a few of the top 10 holders are liquidity pools as well. And the, the, mm -hmm. the first holder here on, on the list is the DAO. And the DAO wasn't always the first holder, but they'll continue to acquire Guac and, you know, continue to uh you know bolster their treasury and it's important because like the dow didn't start that way right so like it shows progress and it shows transparency as well um yeah but going back to you know the launch and, and everything um and it, it seems like you know be, with everything that we're doing and like the constant development and like you know running around uh behind the scenes and making things happen it seems like it was like years ago <laughs> and it was only a few months yeah. ago um yeah. and you know launching it um you know just starting the twitter making sure that like everything was done correctly that like when people interacted with it or like even like went to bird eye or everything that like all the information was there um you know we used our own tools to launch the token as well like the things that you interact with now like that's everything that we launched we built that first and we just saved it for when we like did the DeFi suite um but i think one of the most important things um about and about ecosystems that don't have the liquidity that like other ecosystems like that f have is fair chances uh and when you get into like icos or like coin offerings for a launch etc there's so many ways to like game this um from like different wallets. you can do anything that you want to to like try to like prevent gamification or you know the the mercenary uh, attacks on on these systems to like gain as many tokens as possible but just like launching it in the middle of the night quietly and then like making one post about it and just like letting it do its thing and then it, it's funny because we look back on that as well and it's like there was a period for like i think the three-day launch because we launched for cinco de mayo we launched like one or two days before cinco de mayo and like that three-day period like i was <laughs> i was actually traveling um as well so like i'm doing all of this on the go i think we posted like 1300 times on twitter with like you know everything was customized memes everything was statements we had like coined the phrase scoop the dip like we went full in to the meme thing i was like i said i was doing spaces and helium uh voice as well like voice changers like everything that we could it was like a celsius energy drink full fueled binge of a meme coin launch to like try to get this to like kick off where we wanted and um then like i got back and like you know connected with the team and everything it's like okay and then you know a week later it's like look here's like that we're introducing this and everybody was like what and it's funny because you have like people that like drop off as soon as you introduce products as well because like they don't care that like going back to the human psychology the greed of you know markets and the way markets work etc they don't necessarily care what you're doing um but as we started to you know get more serious about the product side of things and like you know what you guys were looking at and the comments that you made about like what we've launched it's like we've built that rapport with our community now and other communities where it's like you know we we went from like being a meme coin that everybody was just using to like gain clout on on Twitter and like saying like, oh, I bought this like stack of guac or like, you know, guac's now integrated into our platform. So like having actual conversations with collaborative partnerships and like a few things that we're about to launch uh, within the next week. I'm super excited. You know, one of them comes out tomorrow will be like one of the, the, the first ones to obtain that, you know, if you come out next week as well. Um, 
and like going from like the product of the the process of being like that that meme coin you know with lack of liquidity where like no one knows what the hell is going on to like becoming a DeFi super app and like powerhouse with revenue generating you know for the DAO and being able to like acquire the relationships with exchanges acquire the relationships with other protocols and like build collaboratively uh, is like something super special uh, and I think that's like specific to if you look at crypto itself I think that's specific to like the crypto ecosystem because in like traditional markets or like traditional you know. Um, product ecosystems or, or niches like healthcare or finance or, you know, SaaS or anything like that, like this doesn't necessarily happen, right? So like the ability to like work together with other protocols and build that rapport, not only with like your community, but the other protocols so that you, you know, can make both of your products better uh, for the end user is something that I'm super excited to see progress. Um, and that goes back to like, you know, when, when we're looking at integrating things and the reason that we like decided to do some things with integrations as well, it's like, Ultimately, the only thing that matters when you're interacting with the decks or the shop is that like you get the best option that's available. It's not a second rate option, right? It's not yeah. it's not an option that just like benefits us. You know, we're willing to compromise so that like you don't go other places because you know guacamole is the best way to way to do things you know guacamole is the best way to swap you know but guacamole is the best way to speculate you know the games on guacamole are better you know you know the way to launch your project is on guacamole like everything like that and, and the compromises and like the design choices the development choices and the way that we do things ultimately comes down to that uh, because like user is first if you don't put them first then like you aren't generating revenue for the DAO. totally hell yeah well um okay. top of the hour yeah yeah, man. Thank you so much for taking the time to walk us through it. Thank you so much for kind of going into the the backstory here and and giving us like kind of a sneak peek of what's to come as well. Um, super excited to see how this evolves and uh, and hopefully we can have you back on sometime. And yeah, let's do it again in like a month or two so that you can you know go go look at the decks and everything and be like, holy shit, you, you guys weren't yeah. kidding. You're just going to keep building. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Ooh, super excited to be here. Yes. I always love hopping on spaces or interviews as well to, you know, kind of, cool. you know, I'm in my comfort zone here. I love, you know, speaking to other people about like what we're doing and, and get, getting feedback and, and seeing other people get excited about, you know, what guacamole is doing. So thank you again. And, and shout out to hero, you know, I'm excited for what we're about to release in the updates as well. Uh, yeah. Hell cool, yeah. Dude. Rock and Thank roll. You, well, <laughs> yeah, no you, problem. Everybody for joining us and, uh, and we'll see you guys next week on the pit. Are we not going to do a quick, <laughs> what? You should have done a quick market update, dude. Yeah, but I got to hop. Yeah. I can talk forever. Friend. Sorry. <laughs> oh no it's all good it's all good dude um yeah i'm sick as i was kick ass i'm gonna go and buy myself a massive bag of fucking guac dude. <laughs> <laughs> i i actually so like just